In 2007, Kenya erupted into violence sparked by a dispute over election results. The judiciary was accused of being partisan and deemed unable to resolve the conflict. In part two of my discussion with Kenya's Chief Justice Willem Mutunga, he talks about how the new constitution strengthens the judiciary. In 2007, the judiciary was rejected. You know, uh, ODM basically said, this judiciary is a PNU uh, judiciary, and uh, they, they didn't expect any justice, and that people went to the streets. So what we've done this time around is to uh, show that we are uh, prepared uh, to make sure that the processes are transparent and they are known by everybody and they are followed. We are setting up election courts, uh, which will hear these disputes, uh, and the rules are, you know, clearly laid out. For us, it's a great test because uh, if we get rejected again, then we are dead. Uh, but if people come to the courts and uh, find us independent and we apply the law uh, regardless of the consequences, then we will be building public confidence, uh, you know, on the judiciary. It's a great, great, great challenge. Mm. Yeah. So what's the provision right now? Uh, if both sides mm. say, I do not accept this uh, results, uh, we believe we won, we believe we won. They will have to take that dispute to the Supreme Court. And, and that's why it was taken there, because presidential elections are uh, serious issues. The framers of that constitution decided that the seven Kenyans who sit on that Supreme Court will be in a position to decide. And that the candidates will accept that decision. Yeah. Now, most Kenyans have suffered uh, mm -hmm. over the years from um, lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, of course, the judiciary favored the wealthy, the powerful. Yes. Under the new constitution. How specifically mm -hmm. uh, are you handling cases of corruption, for example, mm -hmm. uh, involving powerful people? Mm -hmm. Actually, we are handling those administratively because some of those files were, uh, cases were filed. There were some political cases that were in the judiciary and nobody wanted to prosecute them. Uh, we basically said that's not on. You know, that's, you saw the, the cases on people, MPs charged with hate speech. We fast-tracked those and we have fast-tracked these others. We fast-tracked the Henry Cosgay case, uh, the Ruto case. Uh, because we didn't want to go to elections with people having those cases. Um, and at the civil level, where if, if the government has fi as, as filed some of these cases, we are just, you know, fast-tracking them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, when I speak to mm -hmm. politicians, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to issues of corruption, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things they always tell me is that uh, there's corruption in other places. There is corruption in the U.S. Yes. And it's true, mm -hmm. there is corruption in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's one thing that you're sure of. When they get somebody, this person gets nailed. Mm -hmm. uh, the prosecution will be in his case. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you know that somebody's going to jail for 20 years mm -hmm. for life, mm -hmm. their property is attached. Mm -hmm. In the case of Kenya today, mm -hmm. do we have under the law now a provision where uh, by the prosecution can actually stay on the case mm -hmm. and if somebody had stolen or is known to have benefited from public funds mm -hmm. his property can be taken away mm -hmm. and he could go to jail for as long Don't, as the law provides. Uh, the anti-corruption statutes which, which, which uh, haven't been implemented thoroughly have those uh, particular attributes you know, where you can actually um, uh, follow up these assets. Mm -hmm. And there's a particular statute that deals with the recovery of assets that Githo Muigai, the Attorney General, is, is using to recover assets abroad. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so there's a, there's, there's a, you know, a, you know, a framework for, you know, for that. When it comes to prosecuting uh, the untouchables, yeah. As, as they are called, it's really not the judiciary, it's the prosecution, the direct or public prosecution. But uh, thank God we now have the National Council for the Administration of Justice where the judiciary, the DPP, the entire justice sector sits 
and uh, deliberate on certain issues. So we are in a position to ask Tobiko, why aren't you prosecuting so and so? We can ask the Commissioner of Police, why aren't you investigating this particular person? We are trying to get that assembly line for the administration of justice to be as tight as possible, to be well oiled. Mm -hmm. uh, is there uh, any fear mm -hmm. that from the judiciary itself mm -hmm. that uh, perhaps come next year, mm -hmm. the elections are done, maybe even successfully, mm -hmm. that somebody could actually get in power mm -hmm. and uh, hijack this process and uh, change the whole uh, you know landscape of judicial reforms or even the whole constitution the new constitution mm, you know the there's a special provision mm -hmm. in the constitutions in the constitution that uh, urges all of us as kenyans to defend that constitution and that the constitution has to be changed uh, using its provisions. So my answer to that is that if anybody tried that kind of thing, wanted to change the constitution without the due process, without complying with it, there would be overthrowing the constitution and there would be uh, committing treason and that Kenyans collectively should rise up and defend you know, the constitution because that's what the constitution says. Well, that was Kenya's Chief Justice, Willem Matunga, speaking to us on In Focus.